go OK. If I want to change the value of the resistance of R1, I double click R1 and say I want to put it to 8K. I go to the relevant field and put 8K and click OK. Same for R2, if I want to change the value, I double click it, say I want to put it to 4K. I type in 4K and click OK. So, up to now we have a circuit of two batteries, of sorry, two resistors connected in series and then connected to a battery. If I was interested to see what voltages will appear on R2, I go to the instrumentation, the virtual instrument mode. Click on it. To see the voltage, I need a DC voltmeter. So I click on DC voltmeter, go to the place that I want to place it, and click the left mouse button. If I click the left mouse button again, as in the case of the other components, I deposit my voltmeter there. To connect it again, I click on the terminal to connect and to the place where I want to connect. Notice that at the connection points between two wires, a small circuit appears which shows that there is a node there connecting more than one component. I connect the plus terminal of the DC voltmeter to this wire here and again I get that small circuit which shows that the wires are connected. Now I can simulate the circuit by pressing the play button. The simulator runs and we can notice that there are 4 volts across R2. This makes sense because the voltage will be shared between the two resistances and 4 volts should appear across R2 while the remaining 8 volts will be appearing across R1. Now, if instead of just seeing the RMS value of the voltage on R2, we want to see also the shape of the waveform on it, we will need to use an oscilloscope. So let us remove this AC voltmeter and instead of it insert an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is available in the list of instruments. We click on oscilloscope and click again on the work area where we want to place the oscilloscope. Now the oscilloscope has four channels available. We can use one channel to view the second channel, channel B, to view voltage on R2. It's important to use a ground terminal when using the oscilloscope as a reference for the voltages to be measured. To put a ground terminal, click on the terminal mode button. And from the list that appears, select ground. Then go near the part of the circuit where we want to insert ground, which in this case is the lower wire, the bottom wire. Click and that symbol there is the ground symbol. I connect it to the wire and now we are ready to observe the waveform supplied by the AC supply, the alternator and the voltage that will appear across R2 and the ground terminal. We click play and the voltmeter is showing the AC voltage value from the alternator on channel A which is the yellow trace. As you can see channel A is using the color yellow and the voltage on the Resistor R2 is shown in blue. Here, channel B is written in blue. We can use the timing setting as in a normal oscilloscope. And if we change them, we see that the waveforms change. We can also change the voltage per division. And as you can see, there will be changes in the waveforms displayed on the oscilloscope we can put the ground level of both signals on top of each other like so here I'm moving the ground level of channel A onto the ground level of channel B and again I want to see the waveforms together as you can see they are in phase 
if you measure the peak voltage of the waveform of channel A, it is 2 voltage per division, which is written here clearly. And we go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 boxes. So we get 2 volts per division times 6 division, which is 12, which is the value we had set the alternator to. And then, if I want to see the peak voltage for the voltage across R2, I notice that I'm using 2 volts per division even for channel B. And there are 1, 2 boxes. So we have 2 volts per division times 2 divisions, which is 4 volts peak for the waveform on channel B. Previously I mentioned that there is more than one method to supply an AC waveform. Up to now I have been using this alternator. Let me delete the alternator. Double click the right mouse button. And it is deleted. A good way to supply an AC waveform is by using a signal generator. The signal generator can be found in the list of virtual instruments. We select the signal generator, go on the workspace in the location where we want to deposit it, and click the left mouse button. Click it again and it is deposited. I will connect the signal generator in the location where previously we had the alternator. So the negative terminal has to be connected to the ground terminal and the positive terminal has to be connected to the upper terminal of R1. Let me tidy up the wires using the method I described previously. Highlight the wires and drag them to the new location in which they will be tied here. The advantage of the signal generator is that you can alter the amplitude and frequency of your input signal while the simulation is running. So let's start the simulation by clicking the play button. As you can see, now we have this new control panel visible and there are two knobs that control the frequency of the signal and these two knobs here, colored in red, control the amplitude of the signal. Up to now, it, the signal generator is set to supply an AC waveform which has a frequency of 10 Hz with an amplitude of 1 volt. We can increase the amplitude by turning this knob here. And as you can see from the output of the oscilloscope, from the display of the oscilloscope, the amplitude has increased accordingly. We can increase the frequency by turning this knob here. Now, if we want to increase the frequency beyond the maximum point of this knob, we have to set the range from this other knob here. So I'm gonna use, instead of a range of 1 Hz, I'm gonna use a range of 10 Hz by clicking here. And as you can see, the frequency change from 12 Hz to 120 Hz. I can also go to a range which is 10 times the current range and it, would, it will be 0.1 kHz. By clicking this knob here, I increase the frequency and as you can see from the oscilloscope the frequency has increased. Now I can set the time base of the oscilloscope in a more appropriate setting so that I can see the waveform fitting in the screen. Thank you for following this tutorial. We hope 